歡迎大家今日又嚟到誒、嗯、釋放香港呢個節目，我係羅亞玲。咁我哋今日咧好開心請到政府山關注組嘅成員之一 Miss Annalise Connell 咧上嚟同我哋誒傾偈啦。咁、呃、我需要轉台，因為、啊、大家好、呃、我哋會用英文誒、呃、對答嘅。咁 Yes。Uh, I'm very glad to have Ms. Annalise Connell with us today in this program. Annalise is the historian of our Government Hill Concern Group, and、uh, she did a lot of research for Government Hill, and she also regularly took guided tours around go、um, Government Hill. So, Annalise, can you tell us something about、um, how did you become the historian of Government Hill? I started doing history of Hong Kong with a local website called Gulo.com. So I had been doing a bit of research on how to find things out in Hong Kong. So when I learned that the Government Hill was at risk, I took the skills I learned in terms of going to the public records office、um, and doing online research, and I collected all the information I could find and packaged it into a history of the West Wing site. Yeah. So, this、um, research first appeared on the Gulu website, right? Yes. The minute I heard that the government was planning on destroying the building, I started collecting all the information and originally was posting it on the Gulu website.、Mm -hmm. um, so once once the information was there, and then the concern group was formed, then it became very easy to take that information and and present it in a way that is easy to read. Sure. So, what is the most interesting thing you find out about Government Hill? The thing that I like the best are the tunnels underneath Government Hill,、mm -hmm. because just before the Japanese、um, invaded Hong Kong, the government dug tunnels all over Hong Kong. And the Gulo site has、um, most of those tunnels documented in Wan Chai, but specifically in Central. The, there's a set of tunnels underneath, and government was actually moved underground for about a month when the Japanese were invading. So that, to me, is the most interesting part.、Mm -hmm. And if the building's destroyed, the tunnels will be destroyed as well. Right. So the tunnels were dug、um, specifically for the war, right?、Um, for you know,、uh, avoiding you know any damages of the war. There were there、yeah. are air raid shelters because the Japanese were bombing. Mm -hmm. And that people needed a place to go and stay safely, and、um, and they did. The air raid tunnels were very well used.、Mm -hmm. Have you ever heard the rumors about these tunnels, where、um, it was said that it's for the the governors to escape, for them to、um, go from the governor's house down to the harbor, and on their way visit the Hong Kong Bank and get some money before they go.、Uh, <laughs> Well, I know the I know the reasons for it. In in one sense, that was true. Not just the governor, but the entire government was able to go underground and continue functioning, so that they also didn't get bombed. The story of going to HSBC. There、mm -hmm. is a giant tunnel, and if you go to the Gulo site, you can see a photograph of it. It's it's a very large tunnel, but it's for a, it's for bringing seawater to the building to help with the cooling system. That's why the tunnel was built. Uh -huh. But there's no reason somebody couldn't, you know, use the tunnel to get out. That's very interesting, and it's so much a part of Hong Kong history, isn't it? Well, for me, that's the most exciting thing: is climbing into tunnels. But in terms of history, the history goes back to the、um, the very start of Hong Kong as a as a as a separate entity.、Mm -hmm. So the historical、uh, value. Of that particular location is very very high. Right, right, right. So、um, besides the tunnel, I think you have found a lot of information about the ice house, right? If anyone's、mm. wondering how Ice House Street got its name, shall I tell the story? Yes, yes. So when Hong Kong first started,、mm -hmm. somebody had the bright idea of providing ice, nice hot place. People need ice. So they started an ice company, but after a short time, it went it went bankrupt. Twenty years, but they had a building, and it was on Ice House Street, and that's how the Ice House Street got its name. So twenty years later, and、um, some more people thought, why don't we try again? And they built another ice house, opposite the first one, 
and it's where the West Wing is today at Battery Path. And they went with a, a, an American company that actually cut large blocks of ice from Boston, mm -hmm. put it on ships, covered it in straw, and shipped it to Hong Kong and to India. So it was used as an ice house for a very long time. Right. So that's how the name Ice House Street came about, right? That's right. So I attended um, some of the tours that you um, conducted, and you always like to start from the HSBC. So why did you choose this site, and, and how do you conduct your um, tours? Right now, underneath HSBC, people go and they play and they relax. That was a beach, uh -huh. and that is why it's so interesting. Um, the area where Landmark is, was, um, were bu buildings right away. The government immediately started selling off those um, building lots. But directly in front of the government hill, there was still a beach and there were no buildings. And there were no buildings there because they had a gun battery at the top and the guns were supposed to fire into the harbor to protect against pirates. That's the Mary battery, right? That's the Murray <laughs> Battery, <laughs> which is still um, underneath the West Wing. Wow. And I think it's important that we make sure there's some archaeology work to find out if part of the battery is still Do there. Do you think there may be some relics of the battery there? The battery was a set of walls. Mm -hmm. That's what the battery was. Right. And I think there might be. And mm -hmm. I think we should check. Yeah, that's very, very interesting. And um, how many tours have you conducted up to now? I've done about four tours. I'm mm -hmm. responsible for the English language tours. Yeah. So I believe there have been more Chinese language tours. Yeah, there are more, yeah. What were the responses of the participants? Um, some people knew a little bit about the history, but mm -hmm. I was able to give them a broader sense of the history of that entire West Wing area, right. to tell them about Murray Battery to tell them why that site is so historically important. And so it gives the contrast to the idea that we should just sell it. It's like selling off your own birthright. Right, right. And they agree with you, most of the participants? Yes, and they all say, what can we do to help? Yeah, yeah. So what can people do to help, really? If they, you're asked this question, so what would you tell them? Well, the Government Hill Concern Group mm -hmm. um, has an application into the Town Planning Board and what I say is write to the Town Planning Board and make sure you say, I support protecting Government Hill. Yeah, it's interesting because um, recently the Government Hill Concern Group have submitted a Government Hill Compendium um, in which you have done a large part of the historical research about Government Hill. And this compendium has been accepted by the Town Planning Board and is now published for public comments. So we now have uh, three weeks of public comment period where the public can write in to comment on this report and to support our scheme, right? Right. Yeah. And for um, your viewers, what we're trying to do is to create a pr special protected area and limit the height of any new building. So in the future, if the historic building does need to be replaced, it will not be replaced by a massive sk skyscraper. So that's how we are planning on protecting Government Hill. Mm -hmm. In your view, what would be the best way to use the site of um, the central government offices? So we have the East Wing, the Main Wing, and the West Wing. Now the government have decided that the East Wing and the Main Wing will be used by the Department of Justice and the West Wing, they want to sell it. But in your opinion, what do you think will be the best use for West Wing? I'm going to rely on the government's historical consultant. I am an amateur historian. Mm -hmm. I am not a professional historian. And the report said that the West Wing is of high architectural value. It's a valuable building, but the correct use of it actually is to continue using it for government offices. We now know that after Tamar is finished, it will be full and government will still be renting in Central. 
So the best use of that building is actually to continue having it used um, by the government for the people of Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. Do you think there can be some other public uses as well besides government offices? If government decides that they don't want it, if they really can't use it, we've had many people make rec recommendations to us. Mm -hmm. um, the one that I thought was most interesting was an organization that assists people who are doing social enterprise. Social enterprise is running a business, but the purpose of the business is for some benefit to the public, environmental benefit or something else. So they're in business to make money, but the, what their business is intended to assist the greater society. And they need space in Central near people who can volunteer. They need a space near Central where the volunteer lawyers, the volunteer accountants can come and help them. When you talk about the development of Hong Kong, that would be a very good use of that space to assist in the development of social enterprise in Hong Kong, and also getting everybody to participate in improving society. Mm. So have you actually talked to the government about these options of using the West Wing? Not, not personally. Mm -hmm. I, I believe that the way the Government Hill Concern Group is um, planning on, it is going to the town planning board, our case shouldn't be made to government. Right now, we have to talk to the town planning board because right. government's not listening. Yeah, and we have to talk to more Hong Kong people as well That's to right. get that support. Okay, we'll come back in our next um, episode. 扶贫之父喺二零一一年四月至七月举行咗一系列有关贫穷问题嘅研讨会。Our TV 就呢个议题制作咗一共八集嘅专辑，并请嚟来自各界界别嘅嘉宾就呢个问题进行深入讨论。有兴趣嘅朋友，请留意 Our TV 嘅网上更新。Annalise, um, tell us something about yourself. How did you come to Hong Kong and when did you come to Hong Kong? I was three years old when I first came to Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. I was born in Tokyo. My dad was in business. And so we came here and we lived here for 10 years. And we lived here in the 1960s. People often ask me, oh, what's the difference? And I say, Hong Kong was dirty then. The power plants were very close in, so the pollution was much closer. In Kowloon, the factories had not moved to the new territories yet. Mm -hmm. They were in you? Kowloon. Mm -hmm. Where did you live? That time? Um, I lived in Tin Hao, yeah. and then I lived on the peak. Mm -hmm. So that mm -hmm. was very fun. Yeah. Um, and we lived here during the droughts. We lived here during the riots. So my childhood in Hong Kong was a little bit different, I think, than someone who grew up here in the 70s or 80s. Right. So, so. you remember all about that? I do, but I l remember the things that a child remembers. Mm -hmm. I remember going and, you know, buying white rabbit candy at the corner shop. So these are the things I remember. Mm -hmm. But um, I remember the hillsides covered with refugees. I remember them having no water. I remember ha them having no sanitation. So, especially near Tin Hao, uh, the, the hillsides were covered with refugees. Mm -hmm. So to me, to have, to come, when I came back in Hong Kong in 1998, the contrast could not have been greater. Sure. And um, in fact, after you came back, you have been very active in helping to protect the environment. Can you tell us something about your work experience in this aspect? My, my years away were spent in California, mm -hmm. and they were spent during the time that California decided to clean up. They passed the Clean Air Act, the Clean Water Act, and I watched them go from an incredibly polluted environment to a, a world where you, you were expected to make things better. Right. Then I came back to Hong Kong, and I was walking down to Vaux Road, and a giant bus exhaust pipe aimed right at me. Right. And okay. I thought, I'm sure I can do something about that. Mm -hmm. It turns out I have not been able to solve the bus problem, but I joined an environmental organization called Clear the Air, specifically working on air pollution. Mm -hmm. And I worked with them for many years. 
and then I started another group on traffic safety called Mini Spotters. Right. So I, on, and I have another job. So these are all volunteer <laughs> things that I've been doing. Tell us more about Mini Spotters. Well, when I realized I couldn't figure out how to change government policy on air pollution, I went back to the street and I realized that all the people who were polluting on the street were breaking the traffic laws. Right. So mm -hmm. I have, um, through mini spotters, we've worked on going onto the street and actually enforcing the traffic laws. We collect evidence against vehicles that are breaking the law. We send it to the police. Mm -hmm. We agree to go to court and we prosecute or the government prosecutes. And we have over 150 successful um, convictions now. Very good track records. Yes. So you wear um, your um, clothes, special clothes? when you're. Oh, I make <laughs> sure I wear a reflective vest, just like the, the workers on the street, in case I get run over. And also, just to make sure that everybody knows that something's going on. Right. I do not do this secretly. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They know who I am. Um, and the... Um, the nickname that I do recognize is Wan Bo Po, which I think is a very friendly nickname. I but of know. course, my Chinese isn't so good. I don't <laughs> know what else they call me. Yeah, it's a praise, actually. Yes. I think it's very good. So you are really concerned about the air quality. You are about. You are really upset about the pollution that you are seeing on the street, right? So we come back to Government Hill, and the government is planning to knock down the West Wing and build a. 32-story commercial building together with an underground um, shopping mall and a car park. What do you think will the, the environmental impact of this will be? Well, the, uh, the harbor has been in constant construction for the last 10 years and will be for the next 10 years. And now we're going to create construction in the heart of Central. The traffic problems are going to be horrible. Um, if they tore down that building, that alone puts in a lot of pollution into the air. In fact, a lot of people don't know that the dust, the pollution from construction dust, is completely uncontrolled in Hong Kong. You can create as much as you want. As, so the, the building has to get thrown into a landfill somewhere. Mm -hmm. um, there's going to be a horrible amount of pollution. They're going to increase the number of parking spaces. Right. And they're going to widen Ice House Street. Mm -hmm. Now, Ice House Street right now leads to one of the most congested streets, and they're planning on adding a lane. It just it's, yeah. it makes it c no common sense. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And how about the 32-story um, high rise? Will it create a canyon effect or well, the island effect? The bizarre part of the high rise mm -hmm. is that if you take the west wing right now, right and turn it on its side so it's vertical, it's almost exactly the same square footage. Mm -hmm. So they're going to tear down a building that's exactly the same size, right. put it on end, and it's going to be no bigger. Mm -hmm. So there is absolutely no value in tearing down the building and rebuilding. And to me, that is the, that is the environmental stupidity. Yeah. But the government um, always talked about the, the need for the great A office. What do you think about this um, argument? The West Wing can, is already um, more than halfway to grade A. Right. The definition of grade A is well located. Mm -hmm. it, is, it is already almost grade A. The only things that have to be done is making a pretty lobby. I'm not kidding. Grade A means you have a pretty lobby. Mm -hmm. And perhaps to put in a central air conditioning system and to raise the floor just a little bit in order to put the wires underneath. And like magic, you have a grade A office. There's no, you can convert that building to a grade A office and have exactly the same space. Mm -hmm. So who's driving such a peculiar idea to take a working historical building tear it down, turn it on end, when you can just leave it there. Yeah. In fact, it's something that has been you know, puzzling us for a long time. And um, what do you think is the rationale behind the government sales scheme for West Wing? I Why really, I really have no idea. Mm -hmm. One of the most bizarre parts 
is that they are planning on putting a very large uh, parking lot, underground parking lot there. Chung Kong cannot even fill its current parking lot. They want to turn it into retail space. Yeah. So why the government would destroy a historic building to build a parking lot? Oh, you know, that just breaks your heart. Mm -hmm. <laughs> parking lot and a shopping mall. They've talked about not putting in the shopping mall. Mm -hmm. So I think the public has made it clear already to the government that a shopping mall does not help the people of Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. So you really have no idea about why the government is doing that? I really have absolutely no idea why they would destroy something that is so valuable historically. No idea. Right. So. Um, the Government Hill Concern Group uh, was formed a few months ago and has been you know, doing a lot of work like um, taking Government Hill tours, um, compiling the compendium, and right now is into another three weeks of public, uh, for co public comments. Um, what else do you think um, the Government Hill Concern Group can do more to get more public support? People don't even know Government Hill is there. They don't even know it's theirs. It's like taking someone who has an inheritance mm -hmm. and keeping that secret from them and then selling it. Okay. So in my opinion, the government is being a very bad trustee and that's our position. We, our job is to make sure as many people as possible know Government Hill exists, mm -hmm. that it is the birthright of Hong Kong people to protect it, that it has been there since the beginning and just educate people that it's theirs and it's the public's. Right. In fact, you have been very active at the time um, when the protection of the harbour campaign was on a few years ago. Can you share with us some of your experience in protecting the harbour? Um, we learned how the system works and how the system doesn't work. We learned how to make sure that the tricks that the government used they can't use again. Mm -hmm. That was the most valuable thing I learned on the whole process of the harbor. And we did not stop the central Wan Chai bypass, but we succeeded in forcing the government not to destroy so much harbor. And mm -hmm. so our campaign was a success. But even then, we knew that the building of Tamar, the purpose of building Tamar, was to sell off the west wing of Government Hill. Sure. And we put a big article in the newspaper and we were right. Yeah, and um, the Tamer government headquarters is now near the com completion and the government offices are going to be moved there at the end of this year. So do you think the Government Hill campaign has any chance of success? I don't think the Tamer is too small. Mm -hmm. Government will try and move in. They will move a lot of people in. But Tamar is too small. Mm -hmm. And so um, while we're working at the town planning board, right. they're going to find out they need the West Wing. Mm -hmm. Really? I'm sure they're going to find out. They may try and force people out and force them uh, to go somewhere else. Right. But I'm convinced government's going to find out they need the West Wing. So the um, town planning board hearing is now scheduled to be held in August. Will you be there to talk to the town planners? I will. Mm -hmm. What would you say to them? I will say what I've told you this evening. This is historic. This is our birthright. And destroying it does not help the development of Hong Kong. If you really need grade A office space, convert the building. But we really don't. Yeah. Thank you so much, Annalise, today. It's, it's a pleasure to have you today. And let's talk more about Government Hill in next time. Okay. okay.